Hey folks, Professor K here. We're going to continue learning about typography this week using the lyrical layouts assignment. And today in this video, we are going to focus on really refining that typography, including choosing fonts and really spacing things out for readability and legibility. Let's get started. All right, so here we are. I've set my lyrics for only by nine inch nails and I just got a rough layout going. Things aren't perfect yet. You know, they're still going over my guidelines, but that's perfectly fine. Not a big deal. The one thing I neglected to do last time and that I think I'm going to do right this minute before I go any further is save my document. Look at this untitled two. I haven't saved yet. So I'm just going to do a command S and save this right over here. I'm going to get a save as and here you can just call this lyrical layouts and under where you can click this little arrow here to choose where you want the file to save. I'm going to just put it on my desktop so that I don't forget where it is. Maybe I'll even make a new folder called CM501. So it's really easy for me to find. Hit create. And now my files will save to that folder. So that's a really great thing to do here. Let's hit save. Don't worry about all this. This is perfect and hit OK. Excellent. All right. So a couple things we want to do here. Choose typefaces and then really refine our spacing. Now, before we get into refining our spacing, let's choose our typefaces. The reason why is because the typeface you choose greatly affects how much space it takes up on the page. So as an example, I'm going to go ahead and just change the type in this content and show you how much it can change based on your font choice. So let's set the font family and let's just double click and do command A to select all. And let's just start kind of previewing how much this takes up. Let's do, say, open sans. Look at that. It takes up a lot more space or PT mono takes up so much space that it goes even past what we originally thought it was going to. So that's why we want to set our typefaces first. We want to pick the right typefaces for the feeling of our poem. You are going to pick two typefaces for this first layout. Your title typeface can be a display typeface or something with some more character to it that speaks to the meaning of the poem. Your subtitle can also be of that font. And then this body copy your lyrics, I want you to set in something that's very easy to read and understand. So either a serif or a sans serif. So let's go about how you can choose some different fonts using that. I'm going to open up Firefox here. You can use any browser you like. And here I am at fonts.adobe.com. This is an easy way to kind of look up different font faces. And you can do this right inside Illustrator too, but I kind of prefer the web view for this and just see what is available here. And you'll notice that there are some tags here. Let me even just zoom this in a little bit so you can see that will help you think about what the meaning of the typeface is. So there's Art Deco, there's Black Letter, and there's even a little preview of it to help you with picking and thinking about what the typeface means. So this is a great way to think about, OK, well, how am I going to choose my title typeface? So let me think. My song is only and it's very dark. It's edgy. It's sharp. You know, it's very forceful. So if I think about those terms and what I just listed off and you might do some sketching or brainstorming to kind of get these types of terms going. Go in your sketchbook if you're having a tough time with this and just start listing out terms like that. See what comes to mind with your lyrics. But as I look through these tags, I kind of I think like. Stencil like has like a very like tough sort of feeling. So I'm going to try that first and get scroll through here and just look. And, you know, I could even change my sample text to only. And I don't know. I'm not not sure if these really feel like what I'm looking for. This one certainly doesn't. Look at look at how like swooshy and graceful it is. You would not pick that typeface, right? That's definitely not what we want. So maybe stencils like a little too on point for me. I'm going to unclick that and I'm just going to see what else we have here. Hmm. I don't want friendly. 
What about futuristic? Oh no, I don't I don't like these at all. No thanks. Could try typewriter. This is kind of neat. I kind of like this one. And the reason why I like it is because there, if you look at the details of the typeface, it's got like a little roughness to it, but not too much. Not so much that it's like overly done. The typewriter feel feels um, a little personal, right? A little old and personal. And that's that's in line with my lyrics with only. This one has a similar feel. It's like that little bit of jagged edge on it kind of feels right for the grit of the song. Maybe Sunflower too. And I'm just using Command to open these in new tabs because it's easier. Now plain typewriters, like look at this version of this. See how clean it is? See how it like it feels like it's almost missing something? I wouldn't go with that typeface for that reason. Let's just click around and you know try a couple other things. What's geometric look like? This is kind of interesting. You can see there's lots of interesting shapes here, lots of different typefaces you could look at. This is like a little too on the nose. It looks very like, I don't know, exorcist in nature. And I sometimes you don't want to get something that's like too on the nose because then it's too obvious, right? This is like too friendly. And what makes it friendly are these like little round moments. So I definitely wouldn't go with that. Let's see if we can find anything else in our geometric. I'm really thinking the typewriter face is what I'm going to go with. Sometimes you just have to like look through a bunch of fonts and say, you know, what using your copy feels right. And again, look at the details in each font. Really look at the space. Notice how there are some different, like, see how this N is shorter than the N over here? Those are the types of differences that are going to help you choose a typeface. The larger X height, the larger height of that N or any lowercase letter here is going to feel more open, more friendly, more modern. The lower X height is going to feel a little more classic in nature. I'm thinking that that typewriter face is going to be what we end up with. All right, so from here, I can look and see what each font family or typeface that's what the official term for a bunch of fonts together are a typeface. So let's see what Chandler 42 has. We've got different levels of weight, and that's how heavy or light something is. So in a great typeface, you're going to be able to see a number of different weights all the way from light to dark here. And that gives you freedom and flexibility in your design. So look for stuff that has that italicized or oblique style. Look for fonts and typefaces that have medium and black in their weights. It'll give you more choices, and those are really important for helping with hierarchy. You'll see why in a second. Let's take a look at Typeka. Oh, this one's interesting. I kind of like the mix. So this, this is almost like even more grit because of the light and the dark together. I Ooh, I really like that. Typeka is a, a favorite for me right now. It doesn't have the oblique or italicized versions, but it does have a couple different weights that I can play with. And I'm not planning on using the italics for anything, so I think that's okay. I'm really only using this for my title and my subtitle. So in this case, probably all right. Let's take a look at Sunflower. Rustic and natural. Oh, there's only one way to this. Okay, so I'm just going to close out of that. I'll leave Chandler up in the background here, but I think I'm going to end up going with Typeka. Now that I've actually gone through and tried this out and seen what's in here, I might just want to go back to Adobe Illustrator directly, use my type tool, and then underneath set the font family, and I'm going to go to find more. And I might have to redo the search here to get it to show up. Here you can see now it's right in my font palette. However, is not yet activated. You need to actually hit this activate button to get it to activate. This will likely take a few minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and activate. Do activate this font, don't show again. And see, you can see here that it's activating right now. So until that icon goes away, it's going to be in the process of activating. And it says this was activated. And now you can see that it has the little check mark right next to the cloud. That means it was activated. So now when we go back to our fonts palette and we click in here and search for Typeka, we can use that right now. And I'm going to double click in here, select and 
around again, search for Typeka, mix. Oh, that's, yeah, yeah, that gives it so much personality. Isn't that amazing? Let's go back to Myriad Pro. Kind of boring, right? And then Shift Command Z, redo, go to Typeka, and look how much that's already changed the feel of this piece. Isn't that incredible what type can do? That's amazing. All right, so let's try setting our subheading here in Typeka as well. And I'm going to try a couple different weights here. Here's bold. Bold makes it show up a little bit better, but like it feels like it's like fighting with the title a little bit. Regular, it's a lot more clear what the hierarchy is. Title first and then subtitle. Mix picks up too much of what's going on in the title. So I'm going to go with regular here. And I'm even going to try making it a little smaller, just play around. That's too small. I kind of like the lockup with, and again, I'm holding shift while I'm doing this, with having this roughly be the same size as this. There's what's called optical alignment in typography. And what that means is that when you like literally align an O with, you know, the side of this, see how because of the sides of this O, it kind of feels like this is sticking out further or this is sticking out further. So you can actually, oh, that's kind of nice. That was an accident, but let's just kind of put this over here. See how this looks more in line now, naturally, than it did before? So that's like optical alignment. I'm actually going to go back and just, ooh, I'm like, I am feeling that. Try experimenting, right? And, you know, maybe we do want to go back to the mix now or the bold because it's smaller. I don't know. We're thinking about. All right, so we've chosen our title type base. Now we need to choose a typeface for the body copy that matches the type. Now, how do we do that? And why do we do that? Well, first of all, you might have noticed that we've had Myriad Pro up this entire time. You don't want to leave your type as Myriad Pro. It's literally the first typeface that you can use in Adobe Illustrator. And if you go with the default typeface on your work, your creative director is going to ask you why you use that typeface. Why would you pick that? And it's a great question. Why would you pick Myriad Pro? Anybody can pick that. It looks like you didn't do your homework and you didn't actually think about what the meaning of the type is. If I think about the meaning of the song, if I think about, you know, what I want represented here, this typewriter style typeface is much more personable, much grittier, much better for the feel of Only by Nine Inch Nails than Myriad Pro is very clean and friendly. It makes no sense for those to be together. So now we want to think about a way to pair a typeface with this title typeface. And when we look for good pairings, we are going to look for our X height. So I'm going to zoom in here and I'm just going to drag this guide up. And we are looking at just the top of these lowercase letters. Here is the top of all the letters, the bottom of all the letters, the baseline, and then the bottom of the Y. So these are the relationships we want to pay attention to in picking a typeface to pair with this. Typefaces with roughly the same relationships in X height, we'll even put X here, X height. Typefaces with a similar X height and a similar overall height and baseline are going to feel like they belong together, feel like they're in the same family because they share those same spatial characteristics. If you go and deviate from those characteristics, it's going to feel really weird. So let's give this a try. Let's see how well Myriad Pro would stand up here. This is surprisingly good, surprisingly decent match, but it still feels a little weird to have them next to each other. Let's even change the weight just to see if that helps. Oh, we've only got regular and bold, so we can't go lighter. Sometimes if you have something that feels a little odd, what's good is to push it to the opposite end, really like exaggerate those differences. Okay, so this still feels, this feels like a weird pairing to me. Why does it feel weird? Why do these not really go together? Let's take a look and see what's the character width look like. Notice how much thinner Myriad Pro is in comparison to the more monospace Typeka here. Those are way different. So no wonder it feels odd. I wonder what would happen. Don't do this. You're not allowed to do this. I'm allowed to do it as your professor because I know why and I'm going to demonstrate it to break the rules. What if we stretched it out? What if it was a wider character? 
oh, it looks horrible. Oh, it looks absolutely terrible. But it starts to feel a little bit more like it's in the same family. So now we know we want a wider character, a wider design typeface than this. So instead of going to the same website, fonts.adobe.com, to try pairing things, I'm going to actually try pairing from our character palette. So let's go over here. Let's go to character, set the font family. I like that it's over here, so it's a little easier to see. And just start kind of scrolling through and seeing what feels good. Notice how you react. This one, mm -mm, that's too much character. Okay, but you know, it's like too similar. Notice how you react as you watch these. Like, is that a good pairing? No, it doesn't have enough in common. And what I notice is that when I have something like this, where it's got a lot of what I'll call personality, changes in weight, in texture, in the details in the font face, I've already got a ton of personality in my title. So I want something with less personality over here. And Admiral Fatface has a ton of personality. So it seems like if I look here, and I go back up to acumen variable here. That doesn't have a lot of personality. Let's take a look at that. And that's a sans serif with just very basic proportions. And that feels that feels pretty good. So I'm thinking as I scroll through this that maybe I'm going to go with a sans serif. And that's actually a really common strategy with typeface pairings is to pick the opposite classification. So we have serifs. Let's pick an opposite sans serif to help highlight the differences in each and so that they don't get confused with each other. So let's see what we got here. Omnis is too light. Open Sans is okay. I don't know. I really liked Acumen Variable up here and I don't use it very often. Let's just see what Acumen Variable concept looks like in here. Okay, it's, it's larger. See how much larger that feels in comparison with our Myriad Pro? It just immediately felt larger to me. That's the thing with sans serifs. It can feel a little large on the page when you're printing, so you can go down a point size. And let's even try. Check this out. Look at that. We're getting closer here. Okay, so let's, let's see what we've got here. This is here. Let's drag this up here. And now that I'm pretty happy with what I've got in terms of typeface choice, let's talk about line height. Line height is the space between one line and the next. So between these two guides, this space right here, that's going to be your line height. Also known as your letting in print. Again, I come from a web design background, so I tend to use the web design terminology for that. So a good line height is actually, it's real easy math. It's anywhere from between 1.3 to say 1.5 times your font size. So right now we have a nine point font size and I'm going to use command space bar to bring up my spotlight search because what I can do is I can use this as a little calculator. So this is my favorite trick. If you are on a Mac, spotlight is like the best thing in the world. Use command space bar and use it to open your applications. Here's Adobe Photoshop. Use it to switch things. But my favorite use is to use it to calculate things. So here's nine times and let's let's start with 1.3. Let's see how it goes. Um, 1.3, that's going to be 11.7. And you can see over here that the letting is at 10.8. So let's try setting this to 11.7. Hit enter and here's before, here's after. See how it's starting to feel like it can breathe a little bit more? See how it's a little easier to read now that we've got more line height, more letting? I think it actually needs to go up a bit further. I want this on the larger end, end of the range. And honestly, I've gone even up to two times before, so that would be 18 here, but I'm going to try 1.5. Nine times 1.5, 13.5. And let's see if that feels any better. That actually almost feels like almost a little too much. So if I want, I can do Command A, highlight everything. And I can use the option and then up arrow and down arrows to kind of play with this letting here. So that's less, that's more. Wow, it's jumping two whole amounts here. Let's try 13 and see how that feels. It's still too much. How about 12? That's feeling better. And I'm going to need to go through and like add line breaks here too. So that's important. 
Let's go to the end of this here. And this will affect how this is read too, right? Okay, so here we are. We're at 150%. Let's go to man zero. And you can see we still need to play with this just a little bit more. So let's drag this up. I want to check that your overflow text isn't there. Nope. So that's good. And then here, this last space feels a little awkward. So this is where things are going to get like a little odd. Just one left, huh? Bummer. So I'm okay with this. You know, it's not going to be perfect. I am trying to set a lot of text here. If you want, all that this assignment requires is 10 to 12 lines. But I did want to give you just a way to see an opportunity of what was going on and how you could set more text if you wanted. Now, one thing that you could play with is if you wanted to get creative is like your title placement. Like, could you put it up here? And what would that feel like? Can you activate the edges of the canvas? What if you made things really big? How's that feel? And what's that do with the other relationships on the page? So I'm going to take out these guides for a moment. Um, so command semicolon will hide them. Perfect. So let's try Let's just try playing around now. Now it's time to experiment. So see how like there's like tension now when we put this to the edge here? And let's even do... Let's do trim view. Yeah, and that's how you can see where it cuts off and make sure it's still readable. Could make it super big. Remember to hold your shift key. What if you did this? That's kind of cool. Yeah, you've got room to be creative even in this layout. But the main goal of this one is readability. So we want to make sure that this is really easy to read. But I'm going to go with this as my version one of Lyrical Layouts. I feel good about this. So I'm going to save, and that's my Lyrical One layout, Lyrical Layouts uh, version one. Whew! That was a lot, huh? But you can try different tactics. Try positioning things differently. Try activating the space in different ways. Try different line heights. And most importantly, try different typeface pairings. Make sure, number one, if you do nothing else, try to make sure that you choose only one display font and then one font with less personality. So I chose a sans serif in this case, but you can also choose a really simple serif as well. And we'll talk about those more in class. But I hope that helps you out. I hope that helps activate your mind and make you think of some different ways to start tackling this assignment. Next week, we will be doing a critique and talking about what you can do for the second lyrical layout. So I'm looking forward to that. I'll see you later.